fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social and Association with houseofboxing.com and Empire Fight Store. Eduardo donning a rascal little orange number today. Terrible. Um, how are we doing? Are we flying on numbers? Flying on numbers as always. I'm going to help you out here. A little bit, something, a little technical fault on your social, which will help you. The videos that you do, they're like, I don't know what's up with them, but they're like slow-mo. Instead of playing, like you put a, a video the other day of you hitting pads, and the speed was just all out. It looked, it looked like you were like stuck in mud. So I don't know if you have to turn the speed up of the videos or something, but... So what you're saying is I look shit when I'm on the pads boxing? Actually, do you know what? You didn't look as bad as I thought you'd look. Are you trying to get a fight? Because it's a bit cringy. Like, I feel like anyone that can't fight, it's like, it's like me. Imagine me putting... I could fight a bit. Parsons. You can fight a bit in Siren, Sester. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. Um, how are we, Shun? I hear you've got a new car. You've got a big mouth for your Parsons, haven't oh, you? Do you want me to... That's no, fine, it's fine, yeah. I've got a new car. I've had the same car for like five or six years, you know, so... The general's yeah. upgraded. The general... <laughs> swear. Uh, let's go into it. We're here. We've just seen the weigh-in. I interviewed Jorge about an hour before. All the team just saying what shape he's in. Obviously gone back to Salas where he started his career and sort of had a lot of success in his career. Um, a dangerous Linares going in. I think a really dangerous fight. I mean, look, you can always look at it and say he's coming off defeat, he's towards the back end of his career. But I know he's put everything into this camp, he's back with Salas. And Robert Diaz just said to me there, your mate, we'll be back, don't worry. As if to say, we're going to win this fight. And I think Linares will give everything tomorrow night. Whether it's enough to beat what might be the best 140 pounder in the world in Jack Catterall. We'll see, but I'll tell you what you will get. You'll get a competitive, thrilling fight that might go down the, down the, uh, the home stretch. On the back of your comments yesterday where you said you've got managers like Sam and a great manager, but now show it to me. For example, Jack tomorrow. Do you think he has to stop him tomorrow? Uh, I think he has to dominate him, you know what I mean? But again, at the same time, he's up against it because I know Linares is going to bring it. So a lot of people feel like Catterall will dominate this fight. With all due respect to Daryl Foley, this is not Daryl Foley. This is still, whether he's not still an elite 140, he's a world-class 140 pounder Jorge Linares and some. And I think it's gonna be a tough fight. But yes, I think you know if you want to land the big fights, if you wanna to continue to sell well and you wanna rate well and you wanna get the zone to stump up the money, you've gotta put a performance together that gets everyone excited. And, and Jack's up for that tomorrow night. Next week, we see Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. Now, regardless of what we think, it's fair to say that it's a spectacle. I think Frank said when he was driving up to London, he saw it all advertised and everything. Um, what do you make of it? Well, you said it's a spectacle. You know, I think um, Saudi Arabia have done a, a fantastic job um, putting the event together. It's the heavyweight champion from the UFC, the heavyweight champion from boxing, fighting. It's a, it's a, it's a big event. Um, I don't, I don't think they're selling it like it's a competitive fight because everybody deep down knows it's not. But it's still going to be interesting and fun because it's that jeopardy of every time these guys step in a ring, whether it's Nate Diaz, whether it's Dylan Dennis, whether it's um, Francis Ngannou, you know they've never boxed before, so you want to see if they can or how good they are. But what you're going to see is a raw novice getting in with, you know, arguably, the number one heavyweight in the world. So it's a, it's a terrible mismatch, but it doesn't matter really. It's not, we're not, you're not buying it for it to be competitive, you're just buying it for the spectacle. So um, I think it'll, they'll, they've done a great promotion. They'll continue to do that this week. And uh, we'll be in Mexico for Oshaki Foster against Rocky Hernandez. Cancun or Saudi, I mean, you're gonna get good weather either way. Um, on that topic, I know it's a bit of a weird one, but I'm gonna push you for a prediction for Fury and Garno. I mean, whatever Tyson really wants to do. I mean, I don't feel like if it's fought at any kind of pace, Francis Ngannou can physically do more than, well, how many rounds is it? Is it? Wow. He, I don't think he can do more than four or five rounds. If it's, no, I don't mean that disrespectfully. You're talking about a guy, they're not used to that kind of fighting. I know MMA 
is still intense, you know, the high intensity. But trust me, you'll see. You see him hit pads. You see him working out. He's got huge muscle mass. Like, but it depends what Fury does. Fury may play with him and just hold him up. If Fury wants to, he'll stop him in the first round. No problem. But if not, he'll school him and he'll get him to gas out and he'll he'll just stop him on his feet. But he can't he can't win a round. He can't hurt him. He could actually Tyson could actually put his chin out and let Ngannou hit him clean, and it I, it wouldn't bother him honestly. Really? Yeah. It's they're, they're not strikers like boxers. It's a different you know. You got to, got to remember it's just like Tyson if 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 the gloves were off, and Ngannou like Tyson wouldn't stand a chance. So Francis don't stand a chance, but you know it's going to be a great build up and. I guess an exciting spectacle. IBF heavyweight rankings. Otto Wallin is ranked higher than Anthony Joshua off the back of that win against Murat Gassiev. Does that mess up a plan to do the AJ Hergovic? No. There's conversations ongoing. I mean, um, Wallin won an eliminator against Gassiev to put him into number two. So we'll see. Um, one thing we know is is that after Fury Usyk, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Fury Usyk. You know, in the 23rd date. I guess we'll know more on that. Not next week, but the week you think after. They'll go with it. I don't. But I'm hearing they are. But I don't know if I'm hearing that because people are trying to tell me they're going on the 23rd. This is how the game works. That'd be to maybe stop you then putting an event on. The but but definitely, they've been told that that is a possible date. It's not. It's not just a made-up date. But I just feel like when you're training for an undisputed fight, I don't think Usyk's ready anyway. I don't think Usyk after. Usyk said he wants a 14-week camp. Well, apparently not. Apparently that was just a, an interview in Ukrainian where he said. I like to have a full team week camp, and he would. And I don't think he's physically ready to start camp after the Dubois fight. I think he had some niggles, but it's a lot of money. But I just feel like after after Tyson's done, what's he done? Ten weeks for this camp. He's going to fight and then do another seven weeks, so a seventeen week camp to fight for the undisputed. I don't know. But again, money talks. So if they say that's the date you've got to go, they'll probably go. But I think it'll run into January or February. On Anthony Joshua, what could his next fight be if it isn't a Hergovic? I mean, do we expect to see the Wilder fight in 2024? Manuel Char is a name that I'm hearing thrown about a bit. Yeah, I mean, Manuel Char is the WBA regular world champion. I mean, he's looking for an opponent. He's not someone that you know, we've seriously considered, but you know, it has been put to us before. So has Ajit Kabayel, obviously the hergovic Wilding situation. We'll have to see, but there's still a good chance that AJ could fight in December. Or January, um, but it won't be as I said, Deontay Wilder on those dates. But he wants to complete that three fights in 2023, and he wants to fight in December. So we'll have to see about the 23rd, you know. And obviously we've got Ben Eubank as well. But both those guys, as I said in the interview yesterday, just on me to get out ASAP. Sonny Edwards put out a post this morning. Thought we said no easy fights. Why is it harsher on unbeaten prospects not taking a step up, but allowing ex-world champs at the end of their career to steal a living? Should have been your five versus Edwards in the UK, but Cal turned it down three times to earn three times less money. Um, fights like this ruin boxing. Most avoided fighter in Britain right now at Charlie Edwards. Who's the most avoided fighter in Britain? Charlie Edwards. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But um, I liked the fight, but... We had plans for him to fight in LA. He wanted to fight in LA. Um, it's a good fight, actually. He's got a good opponent. I'm not, I don't rule out the Charlie Edwards Cowyer fight fight, but we'll see how he gets on in LA. Obviously, Sonny's doing his bit for his brother. Um, get him a fight. You know, we got Cal a fight. Get Charlie a fight, and then we'll see what happens after. Just wrap some off. Uh, it looks like no Chris Billum Smith versus Lawrence Akoli rematch. Uh, Chris Billum Smith is now fighting Masternak, we believe. Very strange. Very weird. Um, Lawrence Acoli, man. What an absolute stinker. I mean, whoever advised Lawrence Acoli should actually stop. What's that? What's that Nas video review bank doing? Stop. Finish. He should finish. Yeah, he should retire because he is the worst boxing advisor in the history of the sport. I mean, not only did he have all the problems with the legal situation that was taxing and in many different ways he then had a fight against David Light where everybody left they took him to get beat in Bournemouth and he got beat they didn't allow him to do the rematch probably because they closed the door on the injury clause or timing on him and 
I feel, you know, not just Joshua Boatsy as well, because it's the same people advising them. I feel really sorry for Lawrence O'Cody, genuinely. Like, we never really fell out, fell out. But what has happened to him is just, like, he's gone from world champion, you know, in, in good fights, trying to find a unification fight, with plans to move up to heavyweight, to getting, to losing the asset that really made him valuable. And that was the world title. And if I'm Lawrence Acoli right now, I'm absolutely fuming. He won't say he is because he's got pride and he'll, he won't want to know that he's made the mistakes that he's made. But, you know, how they've let them get out of the rematch when that belt is the only, it's the only asset that Lawrence Acoli brings. You know, his style is awkward and difficult. So I hope he gets his money. I hope he gets his promises. And anybody that hasn't delivered on those promises or, or advised him in a way that they weren't qualified to do so, I hope he uh, realises, but I hope he can get back in the ring ASAP. Buddy McGirt is here. Any update on Dillian White? No. I haven't spoke to Dillian White's team since probably the week after the incident. As you know, you know, we work closely with them. I don't represent them. But he's going, you know, my, I'm guessing Dillian will be working in the background on this appeal, on this case. I've had no involvement with it. He's not said anything publicly, so no. Just lastly from me, it looks like obviously Showtime are now leaving boxing and uh, the Zone have emerged as a potential candidate along with Amazon Prime. Uh, obviously along with yourself and Golden Boy out in the States. Would that affect you negatively? No, I mean, we've got a long-term deal. Our budgets are set. I think it'd be fantastic for the platform. I mean, look, don't want to gloat, but a few years ago, we recognised that the future of live sport was going to be streaming. And people poked fun over the last couple of years about fighting on an app, and they'd never let their fighter fight on an app. Well, guess what? Now they're trying to get on the app. So the zone is the global home of boxing. There's nothing like it. And if we can bring other promoters to the platform, better for everybody. So, yeah, hopefully. I'm sure they're going to talk to everybody, but they need a broadcaster. I know a lot of their fighters right now are concerned about their future. You know, a lot have been on to other promoters and they'll need to secure that broadcast deal ASAP. Eduardo, just quickly, obviously the 5K tomorrow, we know that there's a storm, but me and Cameron Vaughn got up and got it done anyway. Yeah, Serious G's. Are you going to be doing it? Bit. I mean, I don't care about you, but Cameron Vaughn, who's, I think, one of the best young stars in world boxing, had a little T-shirt on, it was freezing. But I will be there for the 5K tomorrow. Not bottling it, no matter about the weather. How do I bottle what, the weather? Can you imagine me? Someone said this morning it might be off. I was like, it better not be. Parsons, can you imagine me waking up? You're not talking about, I'm not you. When I've you done 22k back, this week, yeah, You came back from that trip and you was like, I'm jet lagged today. I can't make it into work. You imagine me waking up in the morning going, oh, there's a storm, so I'm not going to attend the 5k. <laughs> I'll be there. Safe, General. See you soon.